What's going on guys? It's Darian for You The Church and today our message title is You Don't Have To Read Your Bible. What? Wait a second. What is that? Of course you have to read your Bible. What are you crazy? Is this some kind of heresy or something? What kind of channel is this? Whoa, chill, chill, Psycho Darian. It's okay. Let's let's explain this. Hey everybody, it's cool, calm, and collected Darian. And in this video, we're going to be talking about reading your Bible. Is it important? Is this something that we should be doing more often and pursuing? And can you be saved by reading your Bible? Today's message is all about reading your Bible, or the lack of it. Hi, I'm Darian, and in this video we're going to be talking about the necessity or the lack of necessity to read your Bible. Now, what I said before in the title of this video, you don't have to read your Bible. Heresy? So why do I say that? Well, I was at a men's breakfast today, and it was awesome to be there with all these guys who are like-minded from my church and it was a great iron sharpens iron experience and there was a time where a man shared his testimony about how he is moving to Guatemala at the end of July and it's really awesome to see how God just kind of orchestrated everything but there was many times that he had to just step out in faith where there was a lot of gray areas and he kind of stepped out and then God kind of like brought the blessings then. But it's gotta be scary to do that. So I really respected how he was talking about his testimony there. But it wasn't the testimony exactly that stuck out to me uh, in what he was talking about. What did stick out to me was kind of a quote and he related it to his wife. He constantly had to keep traveling from Guatemala to here and you know when you're not uh, with your wife sometimes it's uh, it kind of puts a little bit of a strain on your relationship right it's the same with best friends or family members you can't grow a relationship with somebody if you're not spending time with them so let me kind of explain the real reason about doing this video it's this quote right here and the quote, it relates to a spouse. That's just the example I'll be using today. And it's kind of hard for y'all and for me too, to relate to something like this because I'm not married. I don't even have a girlfriend. So talking about this is really kind of hard to relate to, but bear with me and try to think of this as either a best friend or a family member. And the quote goes, just because you are a far away distance from you, your spouse, does not mean that you are unmarried to her. In the same sense, just because you do not read the word of God does not mean that you are not a believer. However, you can't work on your relationship or marriage if you're not together. You'd end up falling into temptation and your love would grow cold. So that is the quote that I'm kind of just laying out there for today and I'll explain it right now for you. So the first part is just because you're a far away distance from your spouse does not mean that you are unmarried, right? Like if you are married to someone and you take a business trip, you're not seeing them and you're not able to work on your intimate relationship with them because you're not together, you are separated. And the Bible actually warns against that about couples who separate for a long time. It says the enemy can bring temptations and get in between there. So it's not good to be far away from your spouse uh, for long periods of time. You have to meet together. Similarly, our relationship with God works the same way. See, if we don't read the Word of God, if we don't read the Bible, it does not not make us a Christian. 
people might ask us, like, hey, is your relationship with God legit? Because, like, there's no fruit and you're not reading your Bible as you should be. So they might ask you that question, but there's no question. You are saved. You are saved by the blood of Jesus if you believe. But there's also another component to that. You believe because you hear, and hearing comes from the Word of God. It actually says that in Romans, I believe. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on Him to save them unless they believe in Him? That's the first component. And how can they believe in Him if they've never heard about Him? And how can they hear about Him unless somebody tells them? And how will anybody go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, How beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. So the Bible says that if we don't hear the word of God, there's no believing. And if there's no believing, there's no salvation. So if we back it up, it kind of starts from being sent by God to salvation, all in that process. But right smack dab in the middle of that is hearing the word of God. So when you are originally saved, it comes from hearing the good news and believing on Jesus. But your relationship after that with Jesus is what we need to focus on. And this is where probably some of you are today uh, in your relationship uh, or in your Christianity. So just because you don't read your Bible after you're saved does not mean that you're unsaved because your salvation is only contingent on what Jesus has done for you, not what you do, not how much you read your Bible, not how much you pray. But those things are only supposed to be tools to help you connect with Jesus and to patiently wait until your salvation comes, until you are saved and are raised to life again. The Bible is here for us as instructions to help us through this life so we don't have to be miserable here either. God is actually promising through his word to give us joy, to actually help us to get through this life with comfort, not to just be a Christian and be persecuted. That would suck. Why would you want to be a Christian and just be persecuted all the time and not read your Bible and actually be comforted in that persecution? or in that struggle with sin. That's crazy. That's why Jesus, and that's why God has set up this book for us to read, to experience him in our everyday lives. Two things I wanna say, it's two verses. If you look in John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, in the beginning, there was the word. The word already existed. The word was with God the Word actually was God, and the Word became flesh, and we know that to be Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. Now that's kind of hard to understand, so let's just think of this. The word flesh just means made human, made mortal, like us, like you and me. Jesus is the Word made human. He's made real to us. It's God made real to us. So I think that's really awesome. And when we read the Bible, it's like we're reading Jesus. Literally, Jesus is the word, right? So like if we're reading our Bible, we're actually reading Jesus's words because he is the word. So every page is filled with Jesus. When we're reading the word of God, Jesus is is wants to speak to you. And he can actually make these scriptures real to you like he can actually customize them to you not that jesus says to me that i can only love others like i don't have to love this guy though because i believe that jesus told me that i don't have to love him right wrong okay what i mean by that is when we look over a verse like let's say we read chapter 5 of galatians all right so we read chapter 5 and we can read it one time in our life and something will pop out at us but then we read it again at another time in life and something else that we didn't notice before pops out to us jesus is speaking to us through his scriptures and he's helping us understand the word of god slowly sometimes but also at times quickly he makes us understand at different paces so we all have different experience with the word of god some people aren't in it as much so they don't know as much 
and they aren't assured of the things about life. And some people are really stoked in the Word of God. They have a, a deep connection with God because they read His Word. Everybody's on a different level, but that doesn't mean that you're not saved if you're not on this level or you don't read your Bible as much as you uh, want to. It doesn't mean that you're a bad Christian either. It just means that there, there might be something up with your relationship with God. It might actually not even exist. So watch out for that, because I found that same danger just a few weeks ago. I actually did a message on that. If you want to check that out, totally go do it. I'll have the link at the very end of this video. But hey, I found out in my own life that, yeah, this is something that I'm not growing in. Like, my relationship with God, it's stale. I don't have a relationship with the Word. I don't even have a desire to read the Word. Now, I think this next part of scripture is really awesome because it speaks right to the youth. It speaks to my heart. And this is from Psalm 119. This is a very famous psalm. It's one of the longest. How can a young person stay pure? So this is a really awesome, solid question. I can do a totally different video on this, but like, check this. How can a young person stay pure in, in a world that is not, clearly not pure? By obeying your word, by obeying God's word. This is how a young person stays pure. I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. This teen, or a young adult that is serious about their relationship with God, serious about the word. Let's keep reading. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against God. And then it goes to say, I praise you, O Lord, teach me your decrees. How can a young person stay pure? By obeying God's word. That's the key. That's the key keeping us pure and blameless in this life. And yo, check this out in verse 11. I have hidden your word in my heart. That means that even when we're apart from the word, we can't have the word living within us. Jesus. Come on, guys. Like, I have hidden the word in my heart. Can you say that today? Can I say that today? And thinking it over seriously, like, I know Jesus is in my heart, but have I hidden his promises in there? Have I hidden his teachings and his commandments in my heart? Is this something that's serious to me? Let's, let's be serious about this for a second, guys. That I might not sin against you. So even though your salvation does not come from reading your Bible, does not mean that you should not read it, guys. If you're not reading your Bible, you're going to be not, not so pure. And the Bible does say that those who are impure will not see the kingdom of God. So even though our salvation is not contingent on it, our relationship with Jesus is. We don't want him to say, I never knew you because I didn't have a relationship with you. The reason that we should read the Bible is because we need a relationship with Jesus so that we may not sin against God because our sins separate us from God. But a relationship with Jesus, it constantly is making us into a new person if we're serious about it, if we're pursuing his heart. So should we... Do we have to read the Bible anymore? Yes, we need to be reading the Bible because this is truth in a generation that is filled with lies and fake news. Come on, like this is truth and we need this. But here's one more quote that I wanna share with you. This is a quote I believe from C.S. Lewis and this, th this quote says, if you refuse to listen to the truth, then nobody will be able to tell you it. If you want the truth, but you refuse in your heart to listen to it, then nobody's going to be able to get through to you. You've made your decision. You don't want to listen to the Word of God. You don't want to accept the truth because it's uncomfortable, or it's against what you want to do at this time, or maybe you're just dead set against it. And I'm not afraid of offending anyone because this is the truth that can make us right with God. This is the truth that lead, leads us to our blessed hope of salvation in Jesus. This, this good news, this, the Bible is a necessity and I need to be reading it more. Gosh dang it, you need to be reading it more too. And I don't know where you are in life, man or gal. Wherever you are, take it slow. Read the Word of God a little bit. 
get in that, that nourishment every day because honestly, when I read it, it nourishes me. It gets me through my day. Find ways to read it that are special to you and God. That, that's not a bad thing. Having a special relationship with Jesus Christ, not a relationship where you put the conditions and the terms, but a place where God can use you and your special talent or your special way to connect with him to connect with you every day. Guys, do it. I, I dare you to do it. Get that truth in your life so that you can stand against the enemy so you will not be taken down by your sins all the time. Don't we hate it? The devil is always right there to trip us up in the next sin or the next sadness. Well, let me say, with the word of God, it should be our sword. It vanquishes the enemy. The sword of the, the spirit. We need the word of God to guarantee that we're going to be strong and not deny God. So this was a really hard message, and I'm sure it was for you, but there's nothing more amazing than Jesus, the Word made flesh, being able to speak to us today in this modern, in this millennial day and age, being able to speak to us today by reading, studying, and meditating on His words, on, on Him, really, because He is the Word. So be reading your Bibles. Ignore the title now. I'm going to change the title now to Be Reading Your Bibles. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And since you made it to the end, I've got a little surprise for you. If you want to watch an exclusive video uh, that has not yet been released on the channel as of right now at least, uh, you can watch that. I'm going to be releasing it alongside this video to talk about how I have been studying my Bible recently and how I've been connecting with God through that. Thanks, guys. God bless you, and I love you so much. I hope you join me for another video for you, the church. I'm Darian, and God bless. Yeah.